Does that make sense? So there are the three groups of uh, what you would call positive influences upon you, positive spirit influences upon you. The bit that most people don't want to hear about is the negative spirit influences upon you. Right? So we call these the positive spirit influences, and then we call this group the negative spirit influences. Right? Now, the negative spirit influence is upon us very greatly depending upon our own condition of love, truth and humility. In other words, the more loving we become, and the more humble we become and the more truthful we become, the less influence negative spirits can have upon us because uh, we have an integrity to those ideals. And when we have an integrity to those ideals at the soul level or at our emotional core, um, what happens is that the spirits who are darker spirits who want to influence us negatively can only in influence us at times when we let our guard down on those particular things. So, so most, for most people, negative spirit influences happen during the times of most stress in our day-to-day -day life. It's the times when we get stressed and therefore get concerned or have some emotions within us that cause us to feel anger or resentment or other types of things like that. Our condition then in that, in that particular moment lowers and when our condition lowers in that particular moment, all of a sudden these negative spirit influences have a far greater uh, ability to control our lives in that space. So let's look at the different types of negative spirit influences. Firstly, there's a whole group of arrogant spirits and who uh, have an influence upon us. Now, these spirits are spirits who arrive, people who arrive in the spirit world, who are generally arrogant when they're on earth, and they don't change very much as soon as they pass. They, the only thing they become aware of generally initially is that they've passed. They're still pretty arrogant. They still believe they know everything, and they still um, feel that they can help people with their knowledge, even if their knowledge has never been tested. So they're very similar to people on earth who believe they know all things and yet their knowledge has never been tested or proven but they believe they know it and so they believe they should be able to tell you that they know it and, and try to influence you. These arrogant spirits uh, can be anywhere in development from the first dimension of the spirit world which is the first sphere at school through to the sixth dimension of the spirit world or the sixth sphere. Because arrogance doesn't actually... Um, you can grow in love to a degree while still maintaining an, ar an, arrog an arrogance inside of yourself. And, uh, and in fact, the sixth sphere spirit still maintains one primary arrogance, and that is they are highly self-reliant and not God-reliant at all. And in fact, they believe themselves to be God, which is the height of arrogance, actually. So you know this new age philosophy that we have nowadays that, uh, that many people say that they are God or they are a part of God? Well, that's the height of arrogance, in my opinion. And, uh, and once, uh, once we have that level of arrogance, we then start thinking and then feeling, of course, that we know all things as a result of this feeling that we are God. And there are many spirits in the sixth dimensional existence who believe themselves to be God. God is a different entity than what they believe themselves to be, of course. They are just a human, just like you and I are, who have, who have absorbed the idea that they are God and then they've grown with that idea as they have changed and grown in the spirit world. Now, the influence that arrogant spirits have upon us is that they are very firm in their belief systems. They have a really strong steadfastness about what they believe. Now, if they grew up as a Christian on earth uh, and did not leave that philosophy when they were in the spirit world, then they will be in the sixth dimension. They'll be Christians who have modified their belief systems to a degree, but not very much who then feel very certain that that is the truth. If they were Jewish they, on earth, then they'll grow up feeling the Jewish religion generally is that. And when they hit the sixth dimension, they still are in the Jewish religion. 
and, uh, but they believe that to be the only connection with God that you can maintain. And that applies to every set of beliefs that you can imbibe on the earth generally. So, so in this sixth dimension of the spirit world, there are whole groups of arrogant spirits, all of whom are quite separate from each other in terms of their belief systems, um, who absorbed these belief systems when they were on earth and they haven't given them up. They've only modified them to become more loving in the spirit world till they got to the sixth dimension. But they, are, they feel a very, very strong feeling that they are right with that particular belief system. So when they come to influence you, you feel very strong in that particular belief system, whatever that belief system is. And so what's happening a lot on, on earth is people in all forms of belief systems on earth that are, that are not quite very loving on earth, what happens is these arrogant spirits cause them to stay fixated on these particular belief systems and feel that there is no other truth available aside from their own belief system. And that's one of the impacts that these spirits have upon us. Does that make sense to everyone? So if you've grown up in a certain religious form or a certain type of belief system, um, you can also, often when you grow up in a certain type of belief system, have a rebellion against that belief system. And sometimes an arrogant spirit who feels the opposite to that belief system comes along and influences you because you feel rebellious towards that particular belief system. So, so what we find is that many people, for example, who have grown up with Christianity and then they feel very upset about some of the childhood things that happened to them with regard to that belief system. They often feel a lot opposed to that system and then you'll get an arrogant sp spirit with you who believes some other thing, equally perhaps containing not as much truth as it could, but influencing you in a completely different direction, down a certain path. There are also many spirits who, who would classify in this area who believe themselves to be right on all sorts of subjects. So subjects regarding science, mass, and even things to do with the humanities like sexuality, so let's call it humanities, the subjects of humanities. And these spirits who believe themselves to know everything there is to know about those different areas then come and influence you in those particular areas in terms of your beliefs. Um, they have yet to personally discover all of the truth about those areas, but they believe themselves to have discovered the truth about all those areas, which is very different than actually having done that. Does that make sense? And so what they do is they influence us then. Now, is there any questions about that group of spirits? Here? Why do they do it? Why do they do it? Yeah. And it's very similar to why an arrogant person on earth would do it. It's very similar motivation. So a lot of times they feel that if anybody disagrees with them, they sort of take that as almost a personal affront and then they feel that they must try to influence the person to agree with them. And, and that is an emotion where they want people to agree with them and if people don't agree with them, they either feel upset or angry or some other kind of emotion. So they're often affronted by somebody believing a different thing than they believe. Also, because they have this feeling that, that grows in them, that they believe they are God, so they believe that they are the source of all knowledge, and once they do that, they start to go down this track of uh, trying to engage a lot of people on earth to influence them to agree with them. They also have a, a lot of a bit darker motivations, and usually the darker motivations are more to do with emotions. So they have emotions that when you agree with them, they feel approved of and accepted, and they're avoiding the emotion that's the opposite of that generally. So they have an addiction, in other words, to receiving a certain type of emotion from a person on earth or in the spirit world. And so what they do is they teach something that feeds the addiction so that they get the addiction met emotionally inside of themselves. So they have a lot of different ulterior motives for doing so, um, most, of, most of which they are not aware of at themselves. So they just do it because they feel something impelling them, but they're not actually fully aware of their own addiction involved in doing, in doing it. Um, is there any other...? Yeah. So... Um, 
many of them don't have an, a, a motive of trying to browbeat you or cause pain in your life. You know, they don't have that motive. They just believe they know better about your life than you do, and they feel that they should be able to influence you so that you know better. It's a bit like that many of them have emotions like your mother and father have, actually. And when I say you, I mean collectively. You know, your mums and dads, they often believe all the way through your life that they still know better than you because they're older than you. Even about your own life that they know nothing about, they still think they know better. And for many of us, even as we're growing older, our parents still believe they know better what's going on in our lives than we do. And, and these kind of spirits feel the same way towards us. They have that sort of fatherly or motherly type of emotion projected at us that um, they know better about our life than we know. And of course, when you're a spirit, you see a lot more going on, right? And so, because you have a different viewpoint of everything that goes on. And so in some ways, they do know some things much better than what we are realising is going on in our own life. But it is a, a bit arrogant to believe that they then should be able to have the ability to boss us around and tell us what to do and so forth. Some of them yell at you quite frequently. When I say yell at you, though, no, 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 don't you do that, you know, and and you can't hear them with your ears, but the emotion coming at you is, don't you do that. So sometimes you go to do something, and all of a sudden you feel this really big feeling, oh, I, I shouldn't do this, right, I shouldn't do this, even though you have this feeling that you wanted to do it. But there's also this other feeling coming at you, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do this, and often it's an arrogant spirit saying don't go there in the spirit you know coming from the spirit world to you saying don't go there don't do that because they believe you shouldn't do it and it's got nothing to do with them enabling your desires a lot of times it's got a lot to do with them trying to control your desires many of these arrogant spirits also get a kick out of having lots and lots of people do what they want so they feel a sense of power that they never had when they were on earth and so they often uh, try to influence many people on earth at the same time. And sometimes many of them band together in groups and influence people on earth in groups at the same time. So, and they get a feeling of power and control. They get a feeling that they, they, that they have control and power over many things. And, and that's what also adds to this belief they have that they must be God because they've now got power and control over all of these people that, they, uh, that when they were on earth they didn't have, of course. But, and that was the underlying emotional injury. But now they've arrived in the spirit world and spent some time finding out about things they believe that they've got power and control over these people. And oftentimes they have got power and control. And so that feeds the addiction further. Is there any more questions about those spirits? Now, of course, uh, the feeling coming at us is uh, an emotion of that they know better than you know. They know things more than you do. And if you think about it, for many of us, that hooks into the emotion we often have uh, with our own parents when we're young, that our parents know better than we do. And most of us don't heal that emotion in our life or, or heal it very much. And so what finishes up happening is these spirits can quite strongly influence us in a certain direction uh, because we're open to the influence that, that, that they know better. 